Hello, in this video we are going to be looking at innate knowledge and rationalism. To begin with, let's just go over some key terminology that you need to know. The first, rationalism, is the idea that reason and to some extent innate knowledge can provide knowledge of the existence and nature of the world. Right? It's the opposite of empiricism, which believes that all knowledge comes from experience and that the mind is a blank slate or tabula rasa at birth. Solipsism is the extreme sceptical position that suggests that you can know nothing outside the contents of your own mind. It's extreme because such a conclusion seems more severe than the evidence warrants. However, if you think about uh, Descartes' evil demon arguments to the cogito, the famous I think therefore I am, um, this is an argument to solipsism because Descartes is looking for an infallible method from which to derive knowledge and the only thing that he ends up being able to know is that when he is thinking he exists. All right? So it's, it's an extreme skeptical conclusion, it's a solipsistic conclusion. Skepticism more generally is a sort of moderate, um, is a much more sort of moderate idea and it's about doubting knowledge justification. All right? Um, so scepticism is something that both rationalists and empiricists have to deal with um, and generally um, it's based on whether the senses give us an accurate picture of reality. So if we think about for example indirect realism and the empiricism of John Locke for a moment, um, indirect realism suggests that the percept that there is a mind independent world and that our perceptions in the form of sense data represent that world to us. Now there is a question mark about how accurately they do this. All right, so um, there follows uh, skepticism about what it is possible to know from those sense perceptions. So let's now look at some key scholars. Well, first of all, you need to know about Plato's slave boy example and his ideas um, concerning innate knowledge, which can be found in his dialogue Mino. Uh, you need to know about Descartes' skeptical arguments that can be found in his meditations, first and second meditations, and also replies to them in meditation three and in meditation five. And you need to know about Leibniz's block of marble. All right. It would also be helpful, though it is not essential, to have some idea of Chomsky's innate grammar and poverty of stimulus arguments and also nativism, which is the idea um, that we uh, inherit knowledge from our forebears through our genetics. So rationalists believe in one way or another that knowledge is innate and derived from reason. OK, so this is this idea of intuition and deduction. We have certain intuition that seem to be innate um, in us. And from that, we can derive uh, certain other truths about the nature of reality. And that's known as deduction. So rationalists therefore believe that knowledge is a priori. Uh, in other words, it can, it's knowledge known independently of experience. Plato argues that we can only have knowledge of the forms and we gain this through reason and recollection. And that's in the slave boy example that um, I'll look at in the next video. All right. Um, he also argues that unless we have innate concepts, we would be unable to classify our experiences in any way. And again, that's something I look at in the next video. And it comes out through something known as Mino's paradox. Descartes argues that reason is needed to establish the existence of material objects in general, his analogy of the wax in his second meditation, for example, and the existence of God and ontological arguments, and those are in his third and fifth meditations. All right. And it is our understanding, our reason and judgment that establishes whether what we experience exists or not. All right. So I've done separate videos on these, but this is just to give you an idea of what you need to know. So, Leibniz, as I've said, compares the human mind to a block of marble with outlines that can be chiselled out to form definite shapes. So we're born with the outlines of ideas and the truths are innate in us. Right? And these need experience in order to be triggered. 
Um, it's rather like, you know, the mind is a sort of blueprint at birth. And when we have certain experiences, the mind then um, categorizes those experiences in particular ways. And as such, we have knowledge. Chomsky, um, in his Poverty of Stimulus and Innate Grammar Arguments, you know, he says that children are always exposed to enough examples of language before they start speaking. So they must be born with an innate knowledge of the basic structure of human language. All right. If you think about um, that a child learns a phenomenal amount of vocabulary between the ages of sort of two and five or two and six, and the speed at which they do this is such um, that it leads Chomsky to believe that uh, the child must be born with some innate grammatical knowledge because the amount of exposure to um, the outside world and to language is not proportional to the amount of language skills that they actually gain. Right? It's, it's a poverty of stimulus. There is not enough stimulus to justify the amount of language that that child is able to learn in that short time. OK, so the stimulus is the amount of evidence the child is given before they speak. And the poverty is that this evidence is not enough for the child to learn language so quickly. So what reasons are there to believe in innate knowledge? OK, well, knowledge of some truths, such as those of logical maths, do not seem to be derived from experience. There is the idea that sort of maths exists in the nature of things. And if maths exists in the nature of things, um, if you think about the Fibonacci sequence, for example, that you might have done at GCSE, um, then there's no reason to think that it doesn't exist in us in some way innately. OK, moreover, this would explain kind of where these ideas of maths come from. All right. They're kind of innate in the fabric of the universe. They're innate in in our fabric, as it were. We're part of the universe. And so they come sort of preformed. Moreover, experience is not always reliable. Experience can deceive us. Think about Descartes' evil demon argument, and well, actually think about his uh, the three waves of doubt. Right, the argument from um, the senses that suggests that the senses are not reliable, and therefore we cannot use them um, as a justification for our knowledge claims. So we make mistakes. Um, innate knowledge and reason does not come from experience, so it is immune from these kind of perceptual errors. So when we see an object, we automatically realize that it's extended in space and time. So it, it has a shape. Therefore, um, it's extended in space and we're seeing it. So we're seeing it at a particular time. Um, it might be solid or liquid or something like that. And we also immediately realize that there are numbers of objects, that there are singular things and plural and, and things of which there are many, plural, singular and plural. These are ideas that we seem to have innate in us. All right. Um, so the proposition, for example, this rock is solid and has shape. Descartes, for example, would think of as synthetic a priori. In other words, it is not analytically true. Right. Um, it's, in, it's a synthetic claim, has shape uh, and is solid, is not necessarily internal to rock, according to Descartes, although this is arguable to some extent, uh, I'd say to a, a substantial extent. Um, and it's no, it's a synthetic claim because the predicate is not contained within the subject. And it's a priori because we can know this to be true without having to experience every rock. OK, um, now. You might find uh, people like David Hume have something to say about this. But again, that's something that I talk about in a, in a different video. There are, however, problems with innate knowledge. And I think um, that last example will give you some idea of what they might be. Um, also, if there is such a thing as innate knowledge or if we are born with certain innate thoughts, these thoughts might tell us how we think but not actually how the world is so they're not knowledge we might be born with something that is that is innate but how do we know that what we're born with is actually knowledge okay secondly um, babies do not seem to have any knowledge of the world right? john locke pointed that out when he claimed um, that all knowledge comes from experience and that the mind at birth is a tabula rasa or blank slate Moreover, if we do have innate knowledge, then where does it come from? 
right? Um, back in Descartes' time, God was a popular answer. But how can we really explain innate knowledge without God? Right? It might be genetically inherited. Um, so it might, you know, the nativist account might have something in it. But at the same time, if it is genetically inherited, where did it come from in the first place? Um, if it came through kind of evolutionary development, then that still suggests ultimately that knowledge comes from experience, even if now we are born perhaps knowing certain things that we've inherited through our genetic code. But ultimately, it doesn't mean that knowledge was somehow in the universe already. It has still come from experience in the first instance. Leibniz, of course, thought that the mind was a block of marble with patterns already sort of carved out in it. Um, but in that, in that case, we still need to have experience in order for us to have knowledge because if it needs to be triggered by experience then surely this means that knowledge actually comes from experience anyway as without experience we wouldn't actually have knowledge so that's the end of this video in the next video we are going to be looking at themes in plato's meno all right so the theory of forms recollective knowledge and meno's paradox